Thanks for watching Channel NCCI. I'm Kimberly I. NCCI recently published a technical paper on methods of measuring medical price inflation. In it, author Raji Chatteravian explains why the traditional methods used by our industry might not be the best fit and suggests an alternative approach that better suits the workers' compensation system. Raji joined us to discuss these findings. Raji, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Kimberly. So let's just jump right into it. Traditionally, how is medical price inflation measured? So the Bureau of Labor Statistics provides us with a couple of options. Uh, it provides us with the, so what is called the CPI, or the Consumer Price Index. And what that measures is what a typical consumer will pay for goods and services provided during a certain period of time. The Bureau of Labor Statistics also provides a family of price indices called the producer price index. And what that is, is a measure of what the producers of goods and services actually get paid for the services that they uh, provide. For workers' compensation, because the patient or the injured worker is not paying the physician any money, that money that is paid to the physician for the workers' compensation injured worker's service is not included in the medical CPI. Basically, whatever the physician is getting paid is what's going to be in the PPI. Okay, so it sounds like the PPI and the CPI are not necessarily a perfect fit, but they're common. So talk about some of the impacts on our industry from PPI and CPI. We have an industry that is changing. The technological changes in the types of services that the medical community is providing is changing over time. So the PPI may not reflect these changes as quickly as some other price indexes. Speaking of healthcare, there is a methodology that you talk about in this paper, Personal Health Care Index, or PHC. Seems like that could have great potential for our industry. So one of the features of the PHC is that it has the set of services that are very comparable to what we see in workers' compensation. So that is a great advantage in terms of the amount of services for hospital outpatient, hospital inpatient, physician services, uh, occupational therapy, and the like. So the PHC has a set of services that mirrors what we see in workers' compensation. Raji, we've touched on how PHC is good for the industry as a whole. But what about the individual stakeholders? What about the employers, the carriers, the regulators, employees? So for everyone in the workers' compensation system, it's important to know how much the costs are going to change over time. And part of the cost formula is the price of services provided for medical treatment. That is important to the employer because that means they can see how much their workers' compensation insurance is going to cost them in the future. Regulators determine the set of maximum amounts that physicians, hospitals and others are reimbursed for specific services. The regulators need to change fee schedules to reflect the inflationary nature of uh, medical services. From the insurer perspective, it's important to know how medical costs, which make up a large majority of the total workers' compensation premiums are going to change over time. In particular, workers' comp is a long tail uh, insurance uh, type of uh, business, which means when a person is injured, they may be out of work for a long period of time requiring medical services. So knowing the change in medical costs and medical prices over time allows them to better estimate how much future medical costs they need to settle a particular claim. Raji, very insightful information. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Kimberly. If you'd like more detail on NCCI's medical price inflation study, visit ncci.com to review the technical paper. Thanks for watching channel NCCI.